What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and today is an exciting day because I finally get to let you guys know about the brand new Razer phone. Now I know Razer is a gaming company but they actually want to step into the smartphone realm with that in mind and they're trying to bring the best gaming and multimedia phone to the market. So here's the rundown. So first things first, let's talk about the design. This thing's got a rectangular body and for those familiar with it, it looks very similar to the next bit Robin which makes sense since Razer acquired them earlier this year, but they've made some really nice changes to their version of the design. What we're looking at is a 5.7 inch Quad HD display that supports the wide color gamut, and this is actually the same panel as the Razer Blade laptops. Not to mention, this is the world's first 120 hertz ultra motion display. With this display, games are gonna be able to be played at up to 120 frames per second, and it brings an overall really smooth experience even if you aren't gaming on the phone. This is adjustable in the settings though, so if you're looking to save on some battery, you have that option as well. Surrounding the display, we have stereo speakers, but these aren't just any speakers. They're actually equipped with Dolby Atmos, and they're aiming to give 360 degree sound. And I'm gonna have to do some more testing to let you guys know how well they pulled that off, but they did get really loud, and I'm not gonna lie, they did leave a pretty good impression on me. But in order to get great sounding speakers like these, Razer did have to forego adding any waterproofing features, so there is no IP rating over here. And I'm actually genuinely curious about what you guys think about sacrificing that waterproofing feature for great sounding speakers on a phone that's geared towards multimedia and gaming. Let me know in the comments down below. I wanna know if it's a big deal for you or if you think it makes sense. But back to the phone, if we take a look around on the left side, you'll see your volume controls, and on the right side, you'll find your power button, which also doubles as a fingerprint scanner. You'll also find your SIM card tray, which has a slot for a micro SD card if you wanna add some more storage. At the bottom of the phone, you'll also find a USB Type-C port for charging, and this also happens to be the first phone that ships with Qualcomm Quick Charge 4.0 Plus to charge its beefy 4,000 milliamp hour battery. But sadly, there's no headphone jack in sight, which is honestly a serious bummer to me. But Razer does include a high quality adapter that also has a built-in 24-bit DAC, which pretty much means we should get better audio quality than with a standard headphone jack. But man, I'd trade that thing in any day for a built-in headphone jack, not gonna lie. And finally, taking a look at the back, you'll see that this has an aluminum uni body with a finish just like their Razer Blade laptops, and it also comes with a silver Razer logo. But if you really want to rep Razer, you can get one of the special editions with a classic green logo, but that's only going to be available for the first 1,337 who order it, because it's for the lead. And not to mention, there's also dual 12 megapixel cameras and a dual tone flash, as well as an 8 megapixel front facing camera. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to really test out the cameras, so you guys are gonna have to wait until I put it through a real day in the life. Now, Razer is a gaming company that makes a bunch of awesome accessories and some insanely spec laptops, but they're trying to bring that power down to the mobile world. In terms of specs, we're looking at the latest Snapdragon 835 chip carried by all the flagships of this year. 8 gigs of RAM, which is just nuts. I can't believe we're at the point where we're seeing that much RAM inside of a smartphone. It'll also ship with 64 gigs of storage and has that SD card slot that supports up to two terabyte micro SDs, if they'll ever exist. I think that this is more than an impressive spec sheet and it hits a lot of the check boxes that we expect from today's smartphones spec wise. So what does all this power under the hood actually mean? Well, it should lead to great media consumption and gaming. Razer is definitely targeting folks who want the best experience watching content and playing games on their phone. This is running a stock version of Android 7.1.1 with a premium copy of Nova Launcher, but it will be updated to Android Oreo sometime down the line. I definitely think stock Android is the right approach for all the Android lovers out there who are looking for minimal to no bloatware. And speaking of software, Razer is working closely with game developers to bring games that are optimized for this phone and its 2K display. One of those titles is actually Final Fantasy XV, and if you know me, you know I'm pretty hype about that. And if everything goes according to Razer's plan, we'll be playing some awesome games at 2K with frame rates of up to 120 FPS with a great sound experience to follow. And while all of this sounds pretty intense for a phone, Razer said they worked really hard on the thermals to prevent the phone from heating up and throttling under intense pressure. And if you wanna take it easy with this phone, you can always bring down the resolution of your display as well as the refresh rate, which should lead to some pretty awesome battery considering it has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. 
I'm definitely gonna have to do some tests to see if you can get some really nice battery life out of this phone. And while my first impressions were very positive and this thing looks great on paper, it is missing a few key features like a headphone jack, uh, water resistance, as well as wireless charging. So we're gonna have to see how it all pans out once I get my hands on it, but it's safe to say I am pretty excited for this phone. I personally think this phone has a lot of potential and surprisingly, it's gonna be hitting the market for $699, which is actually some pretty competitive pricing in the flagship market. Pre-orders should be live right about now and I'll of course have links down below in the description and November 17th is when it actually becomes available. But even though I'm personally excited, I want to know what you guys think. Are any of those missing features a deal breaker for you guys? Maybe the price? Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. If you enjoyed this video, be the cool guy or girl that gives it a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace.